That is sad, but if you are doing a certain spiritual exercise of the first category, if you are doing it properly, there is the body, mind and speech, all three involved. Like a child while learning cycle riding uses a tricycle first, three wheels. After getting a little bit of practice and when the child grows a little, the child uses bicycle, only two supports, two wheels. And if one in a million joins circus, they ride a monocycle also. Generally you and I don't go that far. But to complete the illustration, three supports, grow or advance, two supports and then only one support. Likewise, in bhakti practices, there are countless exercises which involve all the three. Whatever you know, Muslims have that namaj, Christians too would have certain rituals. Therefore, Kaya Vang Manaha, all three are involved in a category called Poojanam. So Poojanam is not limited to just the puja that you may see in the temple or you may do at home. Poojanam here in this context is representative of a wider group. Then comes Japaha, Poojanam Japaha Chintanam Kramat. Chikpu Japaha is where Body is quiet. Of course, you may move the body a little bit, you may move a rosary, you, know, you may a little bit of gesture, you may make, but that is not required. In Japa, essentially, in repetition of a mantra, repetition of a holy name, what is involved is speech and mind. Two and one. Of the three, two, one, Three is sent on leave. In Japa, you is only speech and mind. You may say, don't we do sometimes mentally? Even when you do Japa mentally, in your mind, you are actually reciting and that is considered a form of speech. It is walk only being activated within the mind. There is repetition, Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai. You visualize yourself as chanting. You visualize yourself as reciting. In fact, in Yoga Shastra they say, speech, Vani is on four levels. The deepest level is Para. In Lalita Sahasranama these four words come in praise of Mother Lalita Ambika. Para is some level of speech, Vani, which only yogis are able to perceive. You and I would not even know. Then there is a Pashyanti, that also is very subtle. Then there is Madhyama, that is mental. And Vaikari, Para, Pashyanti, Madhyama and Vaikari, these are the terms from Yoga Shastra. Vaikari is what is audible. You call out and somebody says, did you call me? I'm coming in a minute. What is heard by others? Or you are doing japa and you are hearing what you are chanting. So, softly or loudly. What is audible is Vaikari. What is one level deeper is Madhyama. Then you have Pashyanti, then you have Para. All this we said just to convey that Japa, even if done in your mind, is considered primarily Vachika Karma, an exercise of speech with the support and involvement of the mind. Mind has to be in it. Then comes Chintana. Look at the neatness the logical order in this shloka, like mathematical equations, like some mathematical functions like sigma, you have series, all odd numbers in a series added up, all even numbers, 
2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 14 plus 16 plus 18, all even numbers. Then dot 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 you put. In mathematics they have various kinds of expressions where much is said using just a few terms. So here, kaya vang manaha, body, speech and mind are mentioned and much is implied by all these and Maharshi talks about these in the context of bhakti sadhana. Some of these are pretty much possible in others sadhanas also. In dhyana sadhana also you could go about study where that would be a little bit of body movements then just speech you are reading reciting something and then understanding. But more so more explicit are these divisions in bhakti sadhana. And having said this, there are three categories and you choose as per your level, as per your comfort or as per your discovering what works best for you. If somebody says, you know, I always go for the highest level, I am going to be Straight away taking up meditation. Good, we appreciate your enthusiasm, but you actually try in the name of meditation, you may actually go to sleep. You may not be ready for meditation. It is one thing to aspire to meditate, but quite another to really successfully meditate. So Michinmaya Anandaji used to say, a plane, an aeroplane has to be airworthy before it takes off. You and I have on occasions experienced how we would have even boarded a flight and we are waiting for the flight to take off. <coughs> then there comes an announcement. Some years ago I went through that I think in Charlotte Airport, North Carolina. Seated comfortably inside, then there was an announcement with profuse apologies. This plane has some technical snag. All of you kindly leave, go out, go to another gate, maybe from C21 to C43 or somewhere to walk some distance. Another plane is <coughs> over there, all ready, and you go and occupy the same seat numbers. But leave this aircraft and go and board that aircraft. We say, what is wrong with this? Technicians have said, this flight cannot take off now. Some fixing is required. So a little bit delay, we go over there and it takes off after half an hour, 45 minutes. So is our case. Because here and there, during a lecture or while reading a book, we felt very inspired and we may make a resolve. I am now going to spend rest of my life in meditation. Leave rest of your life. This evening you try, you won't be able to meditate. You will sit and you want to go to heights of consciousness, but either you get bored or sleepy or you may get wild thoughts all materialistic thoughts. You may think of some sense pleasure or you may get negative thoughts about someone who you know, tread on your, uh, trod on your toes. I have to teach him a lesson. I will do something he will never forget, etc. You know, you work on a scheme, on a strategy to send across a message. That is what your meditation will be. Therefore, unless there is a lot of inner change, lot of load shedding, you have to get rid of Ragadvesha, you have to get rid of various, in today's psychology language, complexes. All of us have some inferiority here, some superiority over there. We have lots of notions and concepts in our head. And they are the things that pull us down. And life teaches us lessons. Sometimes you and I are actually fit 
but we think that we are not fit. Some other time we are not fit, but we imagine that we are better than anybody else. We try to push our way. Life teaches us lessons in both these spheres. So learning from situations of life helped out by scriptures. Scriptures like Bhagavad Gita throw light on a lot of psychological issues. There was a Swami called Swami Rama in Pennsylvania. Swami Rama. He wrote a book on Bhagavad Gita. Recently I had a chance to just glance at it. And to my surprise, he wrote something which I had sort of sensed long back. He has explicitly said, Bhagavad Gita is all about removing varieties of complexes in our psychology. Various complexes. You fear where you ought not to fear. You are jealous where you have no reason really to be jealous. But because of some programming, some conditionings, sometimes lastly to give an example, a poor man and very less qualified is daring to go ahead with a venture. A rich man with lot of academic qualification looks left and right. I don't know whether I can run this show. All because of complexes. So, the science of bhakti says, go slow. Try it. If you want, nobody stops you. But when you find that, when you sit for meditation, you only get sleep, be honest, come to a lower level and do some puja, do some pilgrimage. In Maharashtra they have that Varkari Sampradaya. Oh, lot of people saying Vittala, 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 Panduranga, Vittala. They go from one town to another town. I think they go to Pandarapur, maybe starting in their own villages, various villages. Uh, or do they start at a particular point? Alandi. Uh, they come to Alandi, Naneshwar's place, then they move towards Pandarapur. It's an unimaginable sight, the faith they have, the dedication they have. So that is also Pujanam, because there is bodily involvement. And there is a Vachika involvement. They are saying Vittala, Vittala and maybe singing various abhangs of Tukaram and other poems, songs, you know, devotional things. Similar practices we have everywhere. In 2007, I had a chance to visit South Africa for 10 days. Durban, where 60% of population is of Indian origin. One day they took me to some holy place of the majority black population there and over there I noticed huge number of blacks, the natives of South Africa. They were all wearing long white gowns and all of them were doing a pilgrimage to that little mountain. And it is very similar to how we have this Varkari or some other place, some other, you know, procession going in groups and one Hindu Swami of Shiva Divine Love Society origin had uh, built a beautiful relation. He was alive that time, I met him also, disciple of Swami Shivananda and he died after a couple of years, 2009 I think he died. He had such a loving relation with the black community, having, having living there. He had actually provided lot of facilities for them, for that yatra. He had built some hall, prayer hall, and they loved him. The locals had highly appreciated him. He got donations from all over, especially from well-placed Hindus in Durban, Johannesburg and other places. And rather than spending for just the Hindu community, he had done many things, not only over there, I was told at so many places, left and right, he had, you know, set in motion various charitable enterprises. 
benefiting large numbers of the local black community. So they had looked at, they had begun to look at him as their own saint. So all that is Poojanam. So you and I may begin with what works out best for you. Lastly, I would go to the extent of saying, leave alone meditation. Many of us are not ready even for Japa. Even when we do Japa, the mind wanders like anything. Therefore, we need rituals or we need some social service activities where we involve the body also. <coughs> All right. Kaya Vangmana Karyam Uttamam. The word Uttamam goes with Kramat. Uttamam, it is good, better and the best Kramat in the sequence. Practices that involve all the three are good. Practices that involve only two and one, speech and mind are better. And practices, if you can do them, which involve just the mind are the best. Kramat Uttamam. Now, you and I want a little details, if not more.